Hello? This is Matt from Brings Home Security. Are you all right? Someone just tried to break in. The alarm scared him away. I'm sending help right now. The alarm goes off. The bad guys run away. Most home invasions don't go anything quite like they do on TV. And that was the case for a New Brunswick man who discovered three people in his home just before midnight last month. But in a head-scratching turn of events, the 68-year-old homeowner could face more jail time than the two people that broke into his home. Uh, Edmonton Sun columnist Lauren Gunter joins us now from Edmonton. Lauren, this is, this is a puzzling story. I thought that the Harper government had beefed up what is essentially amounts to a castle law and said, you've got the right to defend yourself in your own home. But Crown prosecutors yeah. and police are still going after this guy. Explain. Yeah, well, I can't explain. That's, that's the outrage of this. You know, a guy named Mike, Michael Woodard, who's a 68-year-old industrial process engineer, lives in a place called Honeydale, New Brunswick, which is about 90 kilometers west of St. John. It is in, not, you don't want to disparage it, but it's in the middle of nowhere. It's very near the main border. Uh, it takes police about 40 minutes to, to answer a 911 call. Uh, so it's remote. And he ends up on December the 19th, just before midnight, with at least two people in his home. One who the RCMP will admit had a weapon that, he, that, that the perpetrator tried to use on Mr. Woodard. Mr. Woodard got a gun. He, uh, he shot the 17-year-old with a weapon in the leg, shot at the car of, of the, the alleged perpetrators, and, uh, and then phoned into police. And, uh, you know, when, when police arrived, they said, okay, well, give us a description here. You know, they're going to arrest these two kids. And then they arrested Mr. Woodard, too, and they've charged him with uh, in, uh, discharging a firearm with intent. I hope he had intent yeah. uh, to, to, to fire the firearm and uh, reckless use uh, of a firearm. Okay, well, it's so only here... reckless if you don't push off the, 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 the perpetrator, if you, don't, if you don't scare away the burglars, which he well, seems yeah. to have done. Well, so. yeah, so I think it worked. Here That's not are, reckless here's to the, me. Here's the charges that, that everyone's facing. Discharging a firearm with intent, discharging a reckless firearm or in a reckless manner, as you said. The 17-year-old robbery and assault with a weapon. The 19-year-old robbery and breaching a probation order. What kind of jail time could Mr. Woodard be facing compared to these, uh, these young punks? Well, it, it's very likely with a robbery charge of someone who's underage. I know a 17-year-old is not dumb. A 17-year-old is not incapable of formulating uh, criminal intent. So a uh, 17-year-old should be... A particular one with a record should be in adult court for something like this. But because he's not, he would probably face about a year or less in a juvenile detention facility, not in an actual provincial jail or in a federal penitentiary. Uh, the 19-year-old faces probably about two and a half years of, of time. Mr. Woodard, on the other hand, because the firearms uh, charges are considered much more serious than the robbery charges, faces upwards of 10 years in jail. Here's my thinking. Um, give the guy a medal. If you yeah. break into my exactly. home in the middle of the night and you've got a weapon and you're coming at me or my stuff and I happen to put a bullet in you, well, so be it. I think you said it in your column. You could shoot him dead. It doesn't matter. Stay the heck out of other people's homes. I don't care whether homes. he has a weapon or not. I don't care if the person you find in your home in the dark, in the middle of the night, has a weapon or not. You don't have to stay, take the time to determine whether they're armed. You don't have to take the time to interview them and find out whether or not they had a rough childhood or that they're addicted to something that's forcing them to you know, come into your home to find uh, money to buy drugs or alcohol. I don't care about any of that. You find somebody in your house after dark, and it is, it's a long-standing tradition in, in common law in the Western world that you're, you're allowed to use deadly force to subdue that person because you can't be sure whether or not they mean you or your loved ones fatal harm. And they may very well. They might be out to kill you. You don't know that. And you don't have time to ascertain whether they're there to kill you or not. You have the right to shoot them. So I don't understand why we see this. We saw this. I know you've had Ian Thompson on your show uh, a few times uh, from Pol Port mm -hmm. Colburn, Ontario. 2010, he found four masked men throwing firebombs at his house just before dawn. When he shot some warning shots at them with guns that he legally owned, the Crown prosecutors and the police put him in handcuffs and charged him, uh, even before they had found and charged the people who were trying to firebomb his house. This is just ridiculous. This is intellectual, uh, preposter it's preposterous intellectually that, that, that Crown prosecutors and police don't understand that ordinary law-abiding citizens have the right to defend themselves and their loved ones and their property 
if, uh, if, if intruders come on, especially, in, especially after dark. I mean, you go back to Blackstone, which is as, as much as close to a constitution as the Brits have, and Blackstone said, you have the right to kill anyone found on your property after dark, including an agent of the king, if that person is there without a warrant or without an invitation. All right, so Lauren, we have a very long it, tradition of, of I, being able to defend ourselves. Absolutely, and I thought Parliament had strengthened this. Obviously, police and prosecutors have a different view than the Parliament we elect. Message we'll didn't uh, get to everyone. No. All right, your column is up at our Facebook page. We invite people to drop by and give a comment there. Facebook.com slash Brian Lilly. Look for Lauren's column. Give it a read and share it. Let other people know. More to come.